OK, let's go. Um, now, basically, ladies and gentlemen, on this problem, what we have is x squared minus 4x plus 4 divided by 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. Now, when doing a problem like this, again, we have to go back to our factoring. Fortunately from you guys, we took a test last uh, two, you know, couple class periods ago on solving quadratics, right? And basically, it's the same thing. We're going to need to practice this. So on both of these, it doesn't really matter um, which one you do, but we need to factor this. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to be able to get to the point where you can factor these in your head. Um, but I understand that, you know, as of right now, you guys still need some practice on doing these. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the long method for both of these. So therefore, we can at least see, again, remind ourselves how to do these. So the first one, again, remember, we always do a times c and b. Multiply, add. a times c and then b. Multiply and add. So basically, if you're in this example, which I'm going to do over here, my a is 1, right? So I do 1 times 4, which is 4. And then my b is going to be negative 4. Over here, I have 2 times 6, which is 12. And my b is negative 7. Does everybody follow me? OK. Um, so now what we need to do is identify what two terms multiply to give me 4, but then add to give me negative 4. Negative 2. Negative 2 and negative 2. Everybody agree with that? OK. Now the next one is what two numbers multiply to give me 12, but add to give me negative 7. Yes. OK. So. There's two different ways to kind of do this from here. All right. Now, I'm going to kind of show you the shortcut once we get to this problem. But I want you guys, again, to understand what exact, why, do we do, why do we do this diamond method. Because basically, what this allows us to do now is for us to now to rewrite the equations like this. x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. Or in this one, I could write this as x squared, oh, I'm sorry, 2x squared. 2x squared minus 4x minus 3x minus 7. Does everybody see what I've done? I have now taken these terms that I've found, and I've replaced my middle terms for both of my trinomials. Does everybody see that? Because I'm trying to factor them. All right, if that doesn't make sense to you, let me go and try to do this. No, it's OK. It's OK. Hold on. I'm going to get through the, I'm going to, it's going to make more sense once we get to it. The other thing, remember, what is factoring? Factoring is writing this as a product. So this represents an area, right? An area of a box. So since it represents an area of a box, let's fill in the areas. x squared and 4. 2x squared and negative 7. Now, just like I added my blue areas here, I can fill these areas with a negative 2x and negative 2x. No, you do not have to do the box. Okay, But what I want you guys to understand, what I want you to be able to visualize with this is, do you guys agree that this area right here, everything that's inside this box, is the same thing as this written out? x squared, x squared. 4, 4. Negative 2x plus negative 2x is 4x. Do you see what I did? But I split it up in a special way so that it fits in those two boxes. The same thing over here. All of this is the same thing as that, right? OK, now, so there's two different ways to do this. We can go back to our grouping method, which I, taught, which I showed you guys at the beginning of class. In the grouping technique, basically what we're going to do, Stephen, is group the first two terms and group the last two terms. Group the first two terms and the last th two terms. Then basically all we do is factor out the GCF, the term that they have in common. Here, my two terms have in common an x. So when I factor out an x, I am left with an x minus 2. Here, they have in common a negative 2. When I factor out a negative 2, I'm left with an x minus 2. So therefore, I factor them out as x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is really x minus 2 squared. Right? Which, guys, should, could we have done that from the beginning? Do you guys notice that's a squared number? And 4 is a squared number, right? Sheldon, not please, no. That's a squared number, and that's a squared number. Does everybody agree? And that is 2 times the square root of both of those. So that's actually a perfect square trinomial, which is like the example I showed at the beginning of class. Um, however, okay, 
need yeah. to No, I'm yeah. just trying to show you. No. You just show what? Why I'm showing you the box? Or in this way? Yeah. Yeah. What I'm trying to show you is, yeah, you can use both ways. I'm trying to just so organize. You can use the box, right? Huh? You can use the box. Yes. Okay. And the box method. Let's look at it again to see how the box method. What two numbers multiply to give you x times x? X. X. x and x. Yeah, what two numbers do you give you x squared? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. x times what gives you negative 2x? Negative 2. x times what negative 2x? So, x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is again the same thing, right? But what, I want, what I'm trying to show you guys is by using the box, it doesn't matter if you use the box or this, but you're still going to get the same answer. So, what is x squared minus 4x plus 4 factored? x minus 2 times x minus 2. So I really don't have to learn how to do the other one. Do they learn the other what? The other the one. This yeah. method? Yeah. No, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. <laughs> Unless you have, uh, well, there, you, have to know fat, you have to know grouping. We will be having problems that are grouping. That's all this is, is grouping. So this is helpful to know. OK? Um, however, do you want me to skip this method and just go with the box here? Yeah. OK. So what two, what two factors multiply to give me 2x squared? And why would I want to use 2x over here? Or should I put 2x here? Can you put the 4 over there and then the 3 over there? You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I see what you're doing. But all right, but let's just pretend. What should I put here? 2x or the x? X. Why would the 2x not work? Because you can't do that. There you go. Very good. I just did it differently. Good. Yeah, that's fine. You switch those. That's fine. So you do x and 2x. x times what gives you negative 3x? Negative 3, 2x, negative 2. Right? So therefore, this is x minus 2 times 2x. Huh? I'm sorry, there's talking over here, so I can't hear you. Say that again. Oh, yeah, it is a 6. Very good. I don't know, I don't know where that came from. All right, so now. Yeah, you're right. Hey, very good. I don't know where those came from. They came from, I don't know where. Oh, they came from, I was looking up there, that's why. Um, so, hmm. so now we look at this and we say, all right, what two terms can divide out? The negative two. X minus 2 and x minus 2. Those divide to 1, correct? However, my restrictions are still going to remain. x minus 2 equals 0 and 2x minus two, 3 equals 0. Remember, our, that, our solutions cannot be 0 in the bottom. So you can't say x minus 2 cannot equal 0. We want to know what is what are the values when x minus what are going to make this zero? What's going to make this zero? Two. two. So you say x cannot equal two, and what's going to make this zero? Three. Add the three, divide by two. X equals three halves. So x cannot equal two, and x cannot equal three halves. So now my final simplified version is x minus two divided by 2x minus 3. However, we want to include the restrictions that x cannot equal 2 and x cannot equal 3 halves. Do we have to? Yes. They can't equal zero no, it doesn't matter if the numerator equals 0. 